session working with Entity and Peer Central Play. <coughs> My name is Florian Weber, or Webflow in the community or all over the internet. I work in Mannheim uh, and currently we do a non Drupal Lake project. And I would like to share some knowledge about how we work with Entity and Peer and the general uh, APIs in, in Drupal 8. I have a lot of examples, it's not an introduction about entities and peers, it's not, it doesn't cover everything in this, in this session and, and mainly not uh, how to write your own entity types, it's how to work with existing entity types and how to work with fields. Yeah. There's the outline, we talk about content entities, config entities, Entity controllers in core and their yeah, fields. Um, what's an entity? <coughs> an entity is an uh, object or class. In Drupal 8 it has generic methods defined by the entity interface and it has um, specific methods. They are defined by the entity class itself. So um, we have two entity types in Drupal core. In Drupal 7 we only had one kind of entity. Um, in Drupal 7 we had entities and now in Drupal 8 we have content entities. Content entities are these entities you already know from Drupal 7. And now we have config entities and in config entities we store everything that is configurable on your site. For example we uh, store field definitions, image types, view modes, form modes, everything that's configurable when you use uh, and this stuff in config entities. And our config entities are now um, provide consistent methods by the entity interface and domain specific or type specific methods from the um, content entity itself. Um, the content entity is by default uh, revisionable, fieldable, translatable, all this new stuff is exciting because in Drupal 7 you had to do a lot in your, uh, in your own entity implementation to provide these features. Content on, and config entities are not, they are very different but they share the same entity interface. So content entity and config entities implement the same interface. Um, in this case it's uh, the entity interface and these are our uh, generic new methods, how to work with entities. You, you can call UUID on every entity, you can call ID language, get entity type, the entity label, and of course you can execute drug operations based on the entity. And then we have a config entity interface, which extends the standard entity interface. Um, we have a new system called the Entity Manager. <coughs> the Entity Manager's um, responsi uh, responsibility is to, to discover all entity types on your website. And th that's your one-stop um, location go to if you want to get any information about the entity types that are defined on your website. And you can instantiate entity controllers from that. There are some code examples, for example, the first is just get the entity manager, then we call the entity manager and ask the entity manager for the get storage controller for nodes and then we have the get storage controller, uh, the stor entity storage controller for nodes and load the actual entity from the storage controller. This uh, uh, example, you just get the entity definition um, from the, for nodes from the entity manager and of course you can instantiate um, the actual entity class and um, ask the entity manager about the metadata from your entity type. And also you can um, ask, um, if you have uh, loaded the entity type, you can um, test with the subclass of if the entity type you are dealing with is a config entity or content entity. Content entity implements a unified interface and unified methods. So this means we have different content entities in Drupal 8 core. For example, it's notice a content entity, taxonomy terms, users, 
or else, I think that's it, I'm not sure. And they all implement the same content entity base. That's why you can then access them in a unified way. That's a big difference because in Drupal 7, we had the first, um, because it was not unified, we had helper methods like uh, entity extract ID or entity label. And in every entity API function in Drupal 8, we have the first argument that was called entity type because we can't get from an entity to an entity type. You always need another variable around it to know which entity type you are dealing with. Now in Drupal 8, because it's objectified and it's a class, you can call ID, get revision ID, bundle, get entity type ID, that's your entity type you are dealing with, and you call entity label. And this works also for config entity. So you don't have to care about much procedure code, it's just all methods on the object. And of course you can use entity type specific methods. They are implemented by the entity class itself. For example, the entity class for user has methods like has role, add role, remove role. So you can give a user another role and then just save the entity um, afterwards, or you remove a role and save the user entity. So you don't have learn anything new, it's just a method on the entity. It's domain specific to the entity. And you can ask if the user has a certain permission. We have other specific uh, methods on the node entity, for example, like set owner and set sticky. So it targets the um, sticky flag on the node or it um, sets an uh, account object as node owner. <coughs> entity type definition. Entity type definition um, is declared as a plugin. So you just um, create an, a new entity class. In this example, it's node. It extends the content entity base. And then you have to type uh, in the annotation. The annotation is metadata about your uh, content entity type. For example, in this case, it's the ID is node. And then you define different controllers. Controllers are also used in AAA. And then you mark your entities as feasible, define their base tables, entity keys, and so on. And the annotation, we had some metadata in Drupal 7, but you can't really depend on metadata in Drupal 7 because it was not enforced by the entity API. There were a lot of optional keys, so you don't know if you're dealing with an entity which has a full implementation or only parts of the system. And now in Drupal 8, it's enforced by the entity uh, content entity type definition, which metadata is required to define this entity type. Speaking of uh, controllers, in Drupal 8, or maybe we rename in it soonish to handlers, we have um, different controllers in Drupal 8, and there's, there's a pattern. Um, a controller um, takes part of certain tasks um, of your entity. For example, we have storage controllers, or access controllers, or view controllers. And controllers are sort of swappable. You can reuse controllers um, from one entity type to another. For example, you can specify your own entity type and use the default storage controller for an entity uh, that's already in core, or you implement a new entity type and just use the uh, existing access controller. So you don't have to write anything new, you just can extend or just reuse existing controllers. <coughs> and controllers are always um, defined or based on a well-defined interface. So that's the contract which, which um, how sh the controller should behave. We have um, different controllers in core. For example, we have the access controller, form controller, storage controller, a view builder, that's a controller that is responsible how you get from a raw entity object to a render array. And then we have the list uh, builder, it's another controller. It's mainly used for um, config entities. So it's uh, a list, it creates a list um, from your config entities. It's for example used in the image styles module because it's a very easy page to generate, just list all image styles and then you on the right side of 
so page you have uh, a drop down button with some entity operations. <coughs> this is um, how an entity access controller looks. Um, you just define a new class, call it um, in this example node access controller, and extend an existing entity access controller and just um, swap out or override the access function. And this access controller is defined in the entity um, annotation right here. And of course there is an other one, so you can swap out um, existing controllers in your Drupal 8 installation. So if, a, if you install a conflict module and, you're, and there is an access controller which doesn't do well <coughs> enough or not enough, just alter the entity definition and you get a new controller. This was also possible in Drupal 7, but there was no unified um, entity access um, methods or control modules like, for example, bean always use bean, bean access or such functions and you can't um, override it. <coughs> For example, the entity storage controller is, is completely new. Um, it provides storage for entities, including base fields and configurable fields. Um, what base fields and configurable fields means um, is um, base fields are the entity properties and configurable fields and fields from field UI module. The entity storage controller is um, responsible for uh, loading, saving, deleting, translating um, and revisions for your entity. <coughs> so translation is nothing what you have to care about if you uh, implement an entity type. It's a storage controller responsible how you store translation. So if you use, for example, MongoDB, you want to store your uh, translation maybe in one object and then if you use a more traditional the, uh, storage controller like a database storage controller for um, entities, you maybe normalize your data difference. Um, this is how entity translation looks like. It's really good because you just call entity get translation <coughs> PE and then you get in translation the translated entity um, the translated entity. And what's really cool about this is um, the get translation, uh, your translation of the entity implements, uh, implements entity interface. So it behaves exactly the same as your original translation. In Drupal 7, it was different because if you have a translation, it was always an incomplete entity object. You can't um, speak or put the translated entity in every function. And then if you have the translation, you just um, get the values. Um, and you can, of course, from a uh, translation, you can also get the um, get untranslated entity. So there is basically a method for every operation you want to do. <coughs> Fields. Fields provide um, behavior, and you can register fields uh, on entity type. In Drupal 8, everything is a field, so we named we renamed entity properties to base fields, and fields as in Drupal 7 fields, are now configurable fields. Um, what it means um, is there is a unified way to access data on your entity. It doesn't really matter if it's a base field or a configurable field because they are implementing the same interface. Um, the base field definition is defined, or base fields are defined in the entity uh, class itself. So we have a base field definition. Uh, it's a static method in the entity class. And uh, this is a base field definition or a part of the base field definition from now. And you see um, we have a um, field area and now we uh, register a uh, node field and we create an integer field. And we give the, this property or field a uh, label in the description. And of course it's read only, so you can't change the uh, uh, know the, uh, the entity ID of an existing entity. You can duplicate it and save it again, but you can't override the ID property. <coughs> it's, it's just a read-only field. That's a new feature. You can't um, 
and force system triple set. Then another cool feature is um, we really uh, leverage entity reference with this part um, uh, in our entity definitions. For example, this type is a bundle of a node, and we, we are leveraging the entity reference field to make a relation from an entity to an entity bundle. It's really cool, because entity reference, because entity bundles are config entities, and we have entity reference in core, so we don't need any new concept, we just create an entity reference field and uh, tell them you can take values from target type, no type. So you can't reference the other config entity as bundle. And then we have a new field with behavior. For example, we have the created field, and the field type is created, not timestamp or integer. Um, this means the, uh, the field class has behavior. So this means um, if I save an, uh, an entity for the first time, the created, um, the created um, timestamp is created or set automatically. Um, there are other cool things, what you can do with base fields now, because they share the same um, field de definition as like uh, configuration <coughs> fields, you can apply widgets and formatters uh, to base fields. Um, this means you can uh, rearrange the type field on your field UI configuration form, or you can change the widget um, of a node author field if you like a select list more than an autocomplete field, you can apply these widgets to these fields. This is what we do here in, uh, for the title field. So the title field has a format on the widget. Uh, for example, um, we have a few fields uh, with field types with behavior. For example, you have the path field, um, which stores the path that the user has entered in the in the form in the um, menu table uh, or path alias table. And then we have language field, which is a special entity reference to a config, to language config entity. And we have the UDU ID field and then um, the created and changed uh, fields. Widgets and formatters are based on the field definition and they are entity independent <coughs> and the configuration for widgets and formatters are now saved in a new um, config entity called entity form display. It's a configuration for the widget and entity view mode, that's a configuration entity for the formatter. When you work, in, work with fields, you don't need these functions like field get item or field view item anymore because fields are objects. We have something like entity metadata wrapper and core, so you can access them very easy. Because everything is a field, you don't have to know many APIs. You just know, have to know the field API and how you deal with these field objects. For example, every field implements the list, uh, field item list interface, and this extends list interface and accessible interface, and this interface extends um, entity access, uh, array access. What this means is um, the entity is con <coughs> um, the class type of entity in this example is content entity interface and field text which is a field on the entity is a field item list interface and then you can because the item list implements array access you just um, hit a curly bracket and then at zero, and so get, you get the first field item from this field. If you hire, I have more examples um, for this. Um, for example, this one. So now we have um, field uh, tags. It's a taxonomy term reference field um, <coughs> attached to a node. And uh, you can access the first reference taxonomy term if you type field, field tags, target ID. Very simple. And because we implemented um, every access, you can, it's an object, but you can access values from it with every syntax. So if you tie node field tags, you get the third item because it's zero index um, from the field. Now you call it target ID. And we have um, computed entity properties. So you can call field 
tax entity. So you get the loaded and taxonomy term directly from the field without manually loading as a real reference entity. And then, of course, you can chain it together, just go label it on it, and then you get taxonomy term again. Um, so the first one, is that actually field has square bracket zero? Yes. It's, an it's another magic, uh, it's, it's, an, it's called magic getters and setters, mm -hmm. and there is a default if you don't provide um, an index or offset in the array axis, it automatically fetches the first one. And it's always the first one. It doesn't matter if your field has a cardinality from one or two or unlimited, it's always the first one. That's, that's good because in NTT metadata wrapper in, in Drupal 7, it was like that. Um, if you call values on a field, you get, depending on its cardinality, the first one or an array. So the type change and your code breaks. Because if you for each over one field and then it, it isn't an array anymore, it breaks very badly. And now that's the convention why we changed it just to that this doesn't happen. So and what if you want the list? Huh? What if you want the list? And uh, you call, uh, I think, list or something. Okay. Or to array, then you get the list. Because it, then, then you get the whole array from entity <coughs> access. Uh, array access, sorry. And because we implemented um, array access, it's also uh, transversible. So you can iterate over a field very easily and get single items from the field. It's really cool. For example, this was how you um, have to deal um, in triple A, uh, triple seven with an entity reference field if you want to do a write. Because you want to apply field language fallback and all this stuff. So we call it field get items, provide the entity type node, insert the node entity, and then you get field related content from this entity and apply language fallback. And then you iterate over the item and load the entities manually. And now in Drupal, or another example with entity metadata wrapper in Drupal 7, you have the node and the node, uh, the node type and the node entity, just instantiate entity metadata wrapper and iterate over um, field related content values. And now you get single items from the field. But this entity metadata wrapper was not in core, it was provided, provided by entity, yeah. entity yeah. module. And this is how it looks in Drupal 8. You just iterate over no field related content and get every single item from the field. Language fallbacks are already applied because it's completely transparent and handled by the entity itself. And you can get the target ID as ID or the whole entity from this field. And it's, it's really cool because it's computed. It's not loaded um, before. We had this in Drupal 7 where you, if you call um, mm, or load an entity on your, you want, there was a pre-field catch load something. What was the name? I don't know. Um, it loads every enti entity in the field before, um, independently if you need or not, if you need it or not. And now it's automatically lazy loaded uh, afterwards, so it's really fast. And of course, you can chain um, entities together. For example, in this, we have uh, field-related content, which is an entity reference field, and I get one item out of it, and I load the related content. I, in this example, it's a node, so I get the related node, the reference node, and the node has a property called user ID. And now I have, because user is an entity reference field, I access the user, and then I call entity on it, so I get the user, um, the user entity, and then I, because the user entity has an email value, an email field, I get email, and then I get the email value. So in this one line, I get the the author, the email from an author from reference entity. Really cool. Yeah. What they have in that case is say when the user ID is is, is sitting on tab. I mean that it in this case it won't happen, but yeah, you know. um, it's it's not. So <coughs> if you go through this magic, you don't uh, you don't get any exceptions. Um, but there are also methods like uh, get offset or. Um, because you can access everything with methods and not through area access and <coughs> then you get exceptions. 
introduce this. Um, maybe I have an example later, but I'm not sure. But this is really a good uh, to work in preprocessed functions or stuff like this, just to load additional stuff um, very easily. And of course, um, if you know the um, the entity type that is uh, that's uh, referenced in this field, for example, um, field downloads is it, um, it's a reference to file entities. I just call the entity and then get file URI, and I get the complete. Um, build query that is um, printable. So I don't have to call file create URL or I don't know, it's a public readable URL. <coughs> you also can change field values very easily. So thanks to Array Access again, we can just <coughs> attach a uh, type and if it's a content uh, an entity reference field, then it uh, validates if um, file is an entity and automatically loads the entity afterwards or I just attach a completely ex uh, loading entity. Or if you want, you can replace the field completely. And now in this example, I attach um, um, entity 5 and 6 and save it into the entity reference field. Really cool. And um, yeah, that's computed properties. So computed properties are um, computed when we access them. Um, and we have um, two examples in Google Chrome. One is entity reference, as shown in these examples. And we have another for text field. So text, a text field has uh, two properties. So first property is value, and then the second property is format, so basic HTML or full HTML. And it makes sense because um, we have to store the format. And if you call um, field text value, you get the raw value, unprocessed, unsanitized, raw value as user as in user input. And if you call processed, you get the process value. So it's already sanitized, runs through the filter system and everything else. Um, it's also another example. Um, how to render a single field. It's very easy in Triple Seven because we have a view method on the field item interface list item interface. Um, in Drupal 7 this code looks like field get items, um, entity type, entity field name, then I have to call field view value and I put in half a million parameters to get it right. Like language and which formatter and stuff. And then I get a render array and yeah, render it. Now in Drupal 8 these are two examples that are um, not related. The first uh, just uses uh, <coughs> Field and call view on that, or on, um, you can provide a string. For in this case, it's uh, the view mode. So it fetches automatically the formatter configuration from your entity in view mode full and renders the field. Or you can um, provide a already um, loaded um, entity entities display, or you um, put in can uh, provide um, custom configuration, like uh, in this example, it's the same view method, but I uh, pass in formatter, uh, image style, and style medium. So it, it invokes the image style formatter and renders the image in medium uh, style, and um, renders it. So, summary. Um, fields and entities have solid interfaces and base class very easy to extend and um, apply um, new behavior to fields and field types are it's the same. So fields and entities are reborn. They are, have a lot of power. You don't have to do any a lot of new APIs, just a few functions and you can um, do very powerful stuff with it. That's it. Do you have questions? I have uh, how the languages are handled with this uh, nested values. For example, for example, if field has another language, yeah, uh, how the code will work? Because there is no language, no prefix now. Yeah, so I think it's, it depends on your. Um, for example, if only field is translated, not the whole entity. Oh, it's automatically applied to the field language callback. So but yes, if there are two versions of uh, this value of these fields in two languages, for example, two body texts, yeah. 
And how can I say which language should I get now? Oh, that's, that's to which language? If you want to uh, add? Uh, if I want to, for example, get value. Okay, um, I think that's... Um, I have an example. Like in Shop Assembly, you have this field and then land code yeah, yeah. and then uh, the, the data work. And yeah. in, um, in the 8, you have to call uh, get translation before, then the entity object changes completely, and then you can access this field value. Mm -hmm. So it's you get another object, or the, the values are internally, it's just in, uh, there is a, a key what's the programmatic <coughs> language in your entity, and then every get method. Language. So first I translate entity and then I get started to okay. 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 Yeah. 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 You say get translation, then you get a complete translation. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a um, entity implements it behaves exactly the same as your object before, but the active language is a different language. Okay. So if you want to do a different language, you have always um, Iterate over all entity language and then afterwards get the field. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? One, one small comment from someone who hates the render array. Yeah. It looks amazing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it is. I, uh, I think one statue should be erected to the guy that came up with that. Yeah, and the fine. guy that created the render array shot. I hope it's not the same person. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, came up with this magic and you know, discussions and yeah, I think it's, it's really nice and that's why I made the session just to, to highlight this, this piece of, of Drupal 8. It's really good. Yeah. As Martin was saying, this wound, 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 wound. Yeah. And nobody does it right. Just language none or wound or I don't know. And then you get uh, another side, uh, language on your side and everything breaks. Yeah. That, that it doesn't happen anymore. I mean, that at some point, first, the first time you see you use uh, Devel and the DPM to, to do debug, yeah. uh, you see all these wounds. And then at some point, you start using the API for the fields yeah. in Drupal and you stop using these wounds. But still, the when you're being lazy, you're, you just copy paste the whole Because DPM. it's so hard. Yeah. And uh, this. And I think we all have done. This is so much more readable. It's yeah. it's yeah. Um, maybe so. That is what could you explain, please? How does this array interface work? What is purpose of that array interface? Why should we convert object to array? Because it's, it's easier to, to write. Um, you can look at the uh, interface itself. But what will change? We just don't use arrow, but brackets instead. Yeah, you can. The if you don't use um, array. <coughs> um, so this is one. Um, no, here, next. And then this one. It's area access, or you use field tags get offset zero to get the field item. And because get offset is very long, you get an item from an oh, it's a shortcut. It's just a shortcut. Mm. That's why we implemented area access because it's so much better. Or it's offset get. I, I'm not sure what. But it's something with offset and get. Mm -hmm. and that's in the means or <laughs> if you use um, get off uh, like get offset and the field has only um, four or five values and you get offset ten, you get an exception. And if you use magic, you just get nothing. It's null. Mm -hmm. It behaves exactly <coughs> like. Uh, <coughs>
Any other questions? <coughs> well, regarding this question, you can always uh, use get class on any object and use um, uh, class implements functions, which are PHP native, yeah. to, to get all the interfaces which are implemented for that object you are currently working on. Yeah. And with that information, you can easily look it up. Yeah, and of course, you can access the uh, call uh, get property definitions on the object. And I, I think there will be uh, extensions for Kumo for to or, or the way to get all um, properties from the format field, also the computer properties. Just difficult to get used to this, so uh, maybe on yeah, the base properties it's one easy one. because we use them very often. Yeah. But if I had to decide, should I call the node title value or should I call node the get title? Um, and I don't know yeah. if I have no, to push it up. But that's, the, that's the easy answer. If you know you, have, you deal with a node entity in, in, your, in your code folder, you can use get title. But get title is an entity specific method. It's always, 
it's only implemented in the node class, not on the user class or something else. If you deal with generic uh, entity code, you shouldn't call get type records, the code breaks with other entity. Just use the uh, methods that are defined on the uh, on your lowest interface you're dealing with. For example, the entity interface, and you have only language and ID and bundle and stuff like that. Yeah, it's it's all <laughs> Oh, it works. Cool. <coughs> definition of the field the five terms doesn't look like this I don't I don't know not how to get I always use it uh to buff and just uh put the breakpoint there and you see you see all the properties and that any other questions and I we still have fifteen minutes. Yeah I know too fast sorry for that very incomplete so we only have some HTTP kernel and controller and YAML stuff and maybe annotations but um, we don't have bundles and if you learn Symfony I think you have a lot to learn about bundles and how they interact with Symfony stack and we don't have bundles so I think there is not much uh, to learn but my point of view
kitchen. And here it uses a constructor and a module handler and it does the annotated class discovery um, and an info so you can alter stuff in this info afterwards. And um, because the node um, interface, because we have a node interface in Core now, and the and you can and get class is a, a, a computed key during the entity manager uh, deco, uh, discovery process. Okay. So you just um, replace the class and it should work. But it only works for nodes because we have a node interface. And every, and every module that uh, deals with node or node specific stuff should implement node interface because otherwise you get problems with typing. So if we type in node, then you can't. You only can extend node, but don't swap it completely. So it's not possible to exchange it to swap. <coughs> it's, um, it's, it's possible user. because we have a node interface and the user entity class. Maybe I don't know. Okay. Let's look it up. Yeah, we have a user interface. Okay. So everything that has it. Yeah, it's it's very clean. Not everything, I think. Maybe taxonomy. <coughs> uh, no, it's what and so entity is. Let me talk. Yes, I, I guess it is. Um, the one, one problem, um, because you mean the type hand <coughs> is missing. Yeah. I think you have 
to generate a class based on the configuration in this. I don't know if it's possible or if there is uh, another workaround for this. Thank you.